Hello and welcome to Feral Plays Rome Total War on Android. I'm your host Sam and with me is Edwin. So we're going to hey, jump well, straight in. This is the uh, sort of the uh, sharp edge of the spear. This is the best version of Rome ever because it's gone through all the different iterations and we've kept on improving it so the Android version is kind of has a few extra things that you might not have seen in any of the other Romes before. Oh, so Very we, nice, yeah. very good. So we'll show you a few of those um, as we go through. So I think to start off, let's uh, go to new game. Let's start off a campaign. And as you can see, you've got all the, the standard campaigns. Um, oh, look, now that's a, uh, that's a faction that was never actually officially available before. You could use a mod to enable uh, playing as the Macedonians. Sweet. But um, yes, there's now an additional, let me think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight factions that are now unlocked from the beginning that previously were only available um, if you did a, a text mod and things like that. So that's really quite cool and should be a lot of fun. I know probably one of the most requested things. Yeah, one of the most had, requested yeah. things we've seen on all versions of Rome is I want to be able to play as these guys without yeah. having to do any mods or any tweaks. So there you go guys, um, all playable. Nice. Um, so, and then we've got all of the uh, standard ones as well. You can scroll around, scroll through them all. Um, I think let's, uh, let's play as the Britons and slowly take over the map from the top. Yeah. It's kind of There's no bias involved in this. It's just not because we're British or anything, you know, it's just... No, no, I just prefer doing it that way, actually. Yeah. Um, you can you can try it from a few different ways. Um, it's a little bit trickier, but it's also a little bit more fun, yeah. so we'll, uh, let's get started. If you notice, we all even added little tips onto the loading screens. There's a lot of gestures and cool little hidden things. Um, so we put those in the tips, so it tells you how to do little things like um, Rome Shell, which we will be oh, nice. showing yeah. you in a little bit. Um, you know, bring bring the game to mobile is great, but you have to you have to bring Rome Shell. Yeah, I mean, there's no other way to sort of yeah. have olifants and just have a bit more fun. So yeah, it's all about the olifants. Yeah. So um, if you've played Rome on any of the ones, you'll know you you've got your advisor. She used to pop up little text boxes. Now it just takes over the screen, and you can just flick through them. Um, one thing I think I'll show off now is uh, basically we've got these little finger highlights. So these little dots are basically what my fingers are doing. It'll probably make the most sense when we're in 3D battles um, so you can see how all the gestures work because we spent a lot of time making those 3D battles work so you can actually have a pretty big epic fight and group your units yeah. and everything else um, and that has been improved even further on the Android version so we did do a, uh, a previous mobile version for iOS but we've, we've taken a step further and added a few extra cool things into this one so yeah so can't very much show you looking that. forward to uh, yeah giving you a First hand experience of that. Yeah, so here we go. This is the um, standard world map you can see. Um, I think what we probably need to do first is we could just go into a zoom in here just to go and select this. Um, so, quick explanation bottom left, we now have um, a pop up where you can actually just cycle through all of your uh, different settlements. Um, also to the left of the settlements there's a little uh, icon there which looks like a little uh, scroll and a settlement thing. If you tap on there it actually gives you a, a quick jump to every single settlement you've got. Population, public order, income and whether or not you've got a governor or, or it's under AI control as you can see here. So one of the things we spent ages doing on the mobile version is every single feature of the original Rome's there and it's really awesome but what we've done is try and make it so it's kind of brought a little bit more into the modern mobile age so we're making it so one tap get the info you need move on yeah. so less time scribbling down on a piece of paper working out what you were doing and more time just you know crushing your enemies really yeah because <laughs> um, that's pretty much what this game's about and there we go same thing with the faction leaders at the moment this isn't that useful you've only got a few people but once you get to middle game end game being able to quickly flick through and see where your military forces are and things like that makes it does make a, a big huge difference, yeah. difference yeah. it helps that micromanagement stuff that comes in like later in the game which is quite quite critical if you want to sort of maintain the empire and keep building it as you go yeah exactly um, so yeah, there's uh, been many a time where i've just sort of lost track of what i've been doing and, I, and i've just ignored something and it's just become so much worse as a result because it's it's just it's spiraled out of control yeah so 
just one other little thing here is we actually now have a, a summary screen which all of the modern Turtle Wars have. Um, Roam on Android does too. So it's really good, just a quick look of what your victory conditions are, how many regions you've got, your cash yeah, and your income, very nice. and uh, you know who your enemies with, basically. Um, so without further ado, I think we should actually get into a settlement. Um, this is all nice and quick. Um, we've also done things where you have, um, if you hold your finger on a button, it can bring up help mode. If you hold it down for an extended period of time, then you can just tap on any area that um, is highlighted and it gives you detailed advice. So, isn't you know, we could go through every single different button and area in the game has these things. Um, there's no point in showing you all of it, but I think the general idea is, is while you're playing, if you're not too sure about anything, hold your finger down on the button for a second or so, and then the little timer icon will appear, and boom, you're into real-time help for everything. Yeah, that's so, super helpful. Yeah, and that's a way of getting a game which was sort of very, very complicated. Um, or had a big manual into something that's a, a little bit more uh, palatable. Right, so let's vote and move on. Right, so uh, we don't have a governor here, but I want to um, manage construction myself. So I've turned off the auto manage construction and let's um, build some roads. And this one here is land clearance, which improves farms. So it's always good, they always need to eat. Yeah, and we can't recruit any troops right now. So let's leave that for now. You can also quickly jump between the different towns, so we probably do that now. And let's um, we need to build some defensive walls. Enables trading of war bands. Okay. Um. The master field, I think, gives you more and uh, more advanced units as well as you play. So you want to be kind of upgrading those barracks type uh, buildings so that you get better and better troops. Yeah, exactly. So um, we'll just have a couple more things upgrading right here. And while I'm here, we'll also show you the uh, a couple of new things which we've added in yeah. to this game from the original um, desktop is this one here is really cool. It shows you your character details, but it shows you um, we've done things like color code stuff. So if you look at your traits, all of your good traits are green. You have any bad traits, they're mm -hmm. red. Any traits that have kind of positive and negative aspects. So I think probably the best one I can think of is if you um, have an, are an accountant, that gives you more money because you're more, you know, got better financial skills, but people really don't like you because people don't like accountants. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> you get more money, yeah. but you, your, um, your uh, command goes down. And I think your influence goes down as well. So it, it's kind of those ones. So it's just an easy at a glance way of being able to look at things. The right hand side is your retinue. So you can trade retinues with other characters. So what you can do is go through all your retinue and then look at the retinues that are really good for um, if you are a commander in battle. So for example, a druid is really good, gives you plus one influence and improved chances of uh, casualties healing wounds so that can be super handy especially in like especially early on if you take a pretty big hit somewhere you you know you yeah. really want your guys to be able, you want your armies to be able to uh, have a chance of recovering yeah exactly so um, but he's going to be completely useless if you've got him with a governor so this guy at the moment um, is my faction leader but he's also sat being a governor of a town so we probably want to looking at all of his um, different uh, skills here he's a confident commander we want this guy out in the battles if you have a look here his command has got really good skills he's really got really good influence as well he's actually quite good at management as well but he's the best commander so let's yeah. go and get him out there um you'll also notice a little green arrow here the you get a little green um just close the help it's trying to help me and i'm trying to explain yeah <laughs> so there we go so if you get the little green arrow um that means that you've got a positive influence through your retinue so at a glance on the other screen here, you can see whether or not you've got retinue which are making things better or worse. And that's really, really handy because sort of um, sometimes you might not realize that sort of you've got uh, someone who could be really, really good at something but has some really bad retinue dragging down. Yeah, yeah. 
Or you might suddenly realize that this guy is really good at influence, but if you take away all those retinue, he doesn't have great influence. So you can go and take those really good influencers, put them on a, a unit that already has great influence and they have even bigger influence. And then that means that you can go and use that guy as your sort of primary commander for your battlefield and things like that. So um, not as important early on in the game while we're playing now, but sort of I think when you get to the more end game times, mm -hmm. or if you've got that, that battle, I know everyone who plays Total War, you have that battle where you're like, this one's 50-50. If you have the right commander with the right retinue, it will make the difference between losing and having like four or five men left or winning and having, let's say, 100 or 200 units left. Yeah. And and that, that just makes such, you know, pivotal moments that can really save you. Um, so it's well worth sort of spending a bit of time every, I'll probably say every like 10 turns, just having a quick check making sure you're balancing everything out correctly. Yeah, I found in I found personally in the late game, if you have a lot of family members and they're not all doing things, they tend to develop more towards negative traits. So you find that a lot of the time you're trying to you're trying to build armies using generals that just aren't very good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You kind of want to avoid that. So uh, one other little thing uh, for anyone who's played games, you know that, you know, your battery is always an important thing. Yep. So if you tap on your date really quickly, it quickly tells you what your battery is, tap on it again, it disappears. So it's a it's a quick way of being able to tell what your battery status is without leaving the game. That's super handy. Um, yeah. You know, it can sometimes catch you out. Um, and I think with zero money left, what we'll do is we'll show you roam shell. So if you hold your finger down in the left and right hand corner, you get roam shell. So it works just like it does on the original game. Um, if you swipe up and down, you can view your previous commands. Um, so if we type in show me the money. Hey, hey, instant money. <laughs> yeah, and then I can also show you a couple of other cheats that um, were added just for uh, this, this version of the game. So um, you've got process RQ, but then we also added all. What does that do, do you say? It processes all of your recruitment queues, and then you can put process GQ, all, and that will process all of your build queues. So if you fancy just going through a really, really fast paced campaign, yeah. this is the way to do it. Yeah, so basically if you look on the internet, um, there are loads of explanations of different roam shells and, mm. and, and, and features and things. So all of those things you used to do while playing on the desktop, you can still do now. Um, we're just gonna give a bit of money so that we can sort of get a little bit more progress yeah. during the screen, but we're not going to go full on all out with them, huge oliphants and <laughs> 100,000 flaming <laughs> pigs or anything too crazy. Um, That's next time, yeah. next time. So one of the things you can do is, um, look, if you just swipe down, you can swipe through all of your different commands, swipe back up, it goes the other way. So um, we don't really want any more cheating for now. I don't, I, I don't think having any more money will, will help us at this point. I think no. if, if, we can't, if we can't win with what we've got, we're in trouble, no. Yeah, so one thing which we have added in is there is a tilt now. Ooh, look at that. That's very nice. Yeah. This is actually one of my favourite, like one of my favourite features is that it's just changing the angle on it. It's, it's so strange, but yeah. before you could on on the, uh, on the on the Windows and Mac version, you could only like scroll in and zoom in and and like a very specific way, and that was it. Whereas now you just get that little bit of tilt, which helps, especially when you come in close. And if you have a lot of characters that are close together, it's very very handy because you can zoom much much closer and be able to figure out exactly where. You like you know pick out exactly which characters that you want and move them around accordingly. It makes such a difference, especially on the, the kind of micromanage level if you have a lot of uh, agents. Okay, right. So let's see these different shrines: happiness, public health. Uh, what's this one? Happiness increases trade all goods. Happiness allay, enables training of woad warriors. I think let's road get warriors. us yeah. Let's <laughs> get ourselves some woad warriors. Uh, it's got some of those guys working. Right. I don't know about you, but I always, when it, when it comes to the, the religious buildings, I always Get choose on. the ones that provide units. Yes. Yeah. Get it on. always gives you an extra little bit of something, something. So, 
So here's an extra little. Uh, So what you can do is you can either decide to put your finger in drag where you want, or you can just tell them that you want to uh, yes. go somewhere, and then they'll go. Lord. And then you can drag it a little bit further. So for those of you who have not played Rome Total War before or have no idea about Chief. this game, this is basically um, one of the, well, I, I, I have to say it's my personal favourite strategy game of all time. Um, and Basically, the way it works is you take your, um, you, you basically start out Orders. on a campaign map and you play in turns, um, almost like a chessboard. Uh, but the map, uh, the board is the map of Europe. And then what will happen is, is when, you're, when your army finds another army and you want to fight each other, that turns into a real-time strategy. Forward. And the units Unable that you've built move. on the map will fight again on General. the actual map instead. Chief! Chief! Orders. Yeah, so what I'm doing right now is I'm getting the majority of my armies all to pile into a boat so that we can um, start taking over Europe. Um, right, so I think that's enough to end this turn. Let's, uh, get and of going. course when you hit enter and everybody else gets their go as well on the campaign map. Yeah, so the, the campaign map is, basically, is a turn-based um, strategy and then when you get into a 3d battle it's all real time so it's a kind of a cool mix of both yeah right so let's yes now what should we do with these guys get in the boat to move and what about Lord? you i forgot to that so move no. Out of moves. There is actually a small bit of island we can take over, but I think for now let's uh, just stack up some buildings and things. Yeah, I think they're rebels to start with, so we don't have to worry about them. Okay, right. Go in here. Let's uh, the units. Uh, here we go, I think that's... Uh... There we go, Road Warriors. Attack 13, Belt Defense 4. Okay, so they, they've got good attack, but not very good defense. Let's and get it, no get armor. It. Yeah, well, they're, yeah. they're hard men, aren't they? Yeah. There we go. Right, let's um, end another turn. And then we can get enough units into this guy and uh, begin yeah, the conquest. Begin the conquest. Right, let's zoom out a little bit more. Uh, yes. So as you can see, it remembers the path that you told it to do last time. So you just tick go. And this is a spy. Um, we actually probably want to put him in the boat. So what you can do with a spy is um, you can put them into enemy settlements and they will tell you more information about the different troops in there, um, who the governor is, and sometimes they can even actually open the city gates. So if there's a, a, a it's a, if it's fortified and it's got gates, mm -hmm. um, you'll see once you put them in with the subterfuge, it'll say you've got now, now got a 50% chance of them opening the gates if you decide to siege. Oh, and that means cool. that when you get into a 3D battle, instead of having to smash your way into town, um, this guy will actually unlock the gates for you. Um, and as you can see, they can have retinues and traits as well. So they can have a, a bunch of retinue which can help things out um, and make it a little bit easier. That's so pretty cool. It's kind of a, a cool little thing. And then General. We've got our faction leader, who we yeah. mentioned earlier has got some of the, uh, the better skills. And merge him in. March! Guys, now we got we got ourselves a fairly decent little command here, General. but we'll grab our. Uh, so uh, there's another little oh, handy nice. feature I completely forgot about mentioning. But if you just put your finger and drag up, you can make everything big, so it's just a bit easier to be able to see what your units are, and then just whoop, pull it back down again. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, I like that. So again, it's just a little thing for the phone. If you've got problems with you, hitting things dead on, we went. Two by two bigger, so all of these icons are now like high definition. Every single one of the unit cards is re was repainted from scratch. 
Um, same thing with all of the icons. Uh, we bring up all of these card bars here and everything. It's, uh, yeah, they look really nice and yeah, really yeah, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's the it, it's the march of time. I mean, yeah. this, this game is a real classic. But these days, uh, the phone we're playing on right now is sort of you, you can play like 1080p. Um, 1080p wasn't really even a thing yeah. when this game first came out. So yeah, it's been so quite it's cool up, upgrading everything so it feels just right on a on a modern phone. These are news. We haven't flipped through this in a bit. So essentially, we have a lot of news. We have a lot of news because <laughs> yeah. we built a whole bunch of buildings. So what you can do, which again is a new thing for the mobile version of the game, is before you'd have to click through all the different bits of news. So if you had near the end of the game, when you have, let's say, 20 or 30 different settlements, you'll have news coming from all different settlements, uh, and you've got to click through each one. Um, we added this really cool button here. Actually, I'll hold down help and it should kick in. Destroy all news Destroy items. Destroy all news items. I love the wording in that. It's yeah. Not, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not okay, just remove it destroy all news items so there you go gone yeah, that's a good so. way of that's a good way of ignoring any problems that you might have as well in the later game where you you know if you really don't want to deal with that yeah pestilence yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to deal with that plague of rebellion that's going on somewhere across the map just destroy all ambush news sorry so I'll quickly jump back into that town for a second um, or settlement. Let's have a quick look in the recruitment queue. So let's just add a couple more here. Um, oh, we still can't build anything. So what you might notice here is sometimes you can't um, build anything because maybe you might need to have a larger population. Right. So you can upgrade the town to a large town and that gives you more building options. So what we've essentially done now is we've kind of built nearly all of the uh, different uh, Potential buildings for a normal town so what we really need to do now is build up the population so that we can um, become a large town and then once we're a large town we can then upgrade the walls the barracks get better troops so sometimes it's actually worth um, not recruiting units because recruiting units lowers your population yeah. so sometimes it's best not to recruit and let your population build up so that then you can upgrade your town and then build better units yeah um, at this point in time, it's probably better for us to actually build a few units so we can at least sort of defend and yeah, expand yeah. a bit. But that's going to be probably our, our next big thing for us to do. Right, so I'm back in Londinium, and what I've decided to do is I'm going to build a port, and also we're going to have a look at what else we can build here to um, build a market. Trade is a really, really easy thing to do. Just build markets and build roads wherever you go, and it increases trade between all of your settlements and it's just a constant a bit of extra money coming in for very little extra for a very yeah. little investment yeah and it just pays off forever yeah so you do it once and then just forever you get that little bit of extra money coming in and um, one thing I tend to do is also just try and make sure that you've built ports everywhere because having trade routes um, using using shipping mm. is can can Bring so much money in in Endgame, and you can also actually destroy, um, as we'll maybe get to later on, is you can go and blockade enemy ports, and it can completely destroy their trade and actually make them sort of run out of money. Um, and then all of a sudden, instead of coming kind of having waves and waves of armies attacking you, you've just got a few low-end troops because they just can't afford to buy, build any more troops. Yeah. Um, so there are multiple ways of winning in Rome, which is what I really quite like. You, it isn't just build the biggest army and win. You can do it through sneaky ways of you know, stopping their path to basically making a lot of money, um, doing a, deals with other more powerful factions than yourself, or if there's one really powerful faction, find all of the factions around it and then become friends with all of them. And then all of a sudden that, that faction will no longer want to attack you because if they do, suddenly four factions will attack them back. Yeah. So that allows you to slowly nibble at their borders for ages. And then when you're ready to attack, you can go all in. Um, there are loads of really cool different ways of doing things, I yeah. think. So and, also, uh, and also like using uh, diplomats for um, like the negotiations, like for especially for trade. If you want to trade with other factions, that can be a massive increase into the wealth as well, especially if there's a more powerful faction um, out there that can 
that yes. has a you know is much bigger empire than yours. If you start trading with them, you start benefiting from their resources. So it's definitely one to um, definitely that's a I'd say that's a very good early game thing to start with is to, to send your diplomat out and get as many of as start with your neighbor neighboring factions wherever you're based and then work your way out slowly so that you get you know trade agreements with as many people as you can um, because when you start fighting, you're going to need you know as much money as you can in theory. Yeah, so um, it's, I've just dragged my, here we go actually, I'll show you again. So I decided to attack, and when you attack a neutral faction, it goes, do you really want to do it? Yeah, let's go for it. So next turn we will attack. Um, there will be repercussions of this, but I think we're, we should be okay. We're pretty um, strong. We're pretty strong. We're pretty I'm strong. Confident. It, it's confident. one of the smaller factions down here, so yeah. we should be able to get away with it. Um, and your here is a diplomat, so let's go and send our diplomat out this way. Yes, master. Right, here we go. So, um, I've got an defensive attack. I think it should be fine. Ah, here we go. So he's got a fair few reinforcements, but overall we have more people. And also, if you notice, it, he, it's a captain. So a captain means that they don't actually have a general there. So um, that means that their morale will probably be pretty, uh, pretty, pretty low cool. for it. Yeah. yeah. So the general has a lot of good buffs, especially on the battlefield, where it can yeah. really help turn the tide, as well as being a really powerful unit. Um, you know, being you know an absolute unit, yeah. um, it can be. You know, it can actually you know offer a lot of um, you know helpful assistance to the to the other troops when he's fighting as well. So it's definitely a good one to have over a captain. Yeah, so one of the things you can do here is it's got reinforcements. If you actually tap on the reinforcements, it will give you as much information as you um, can get. So in this case, um, we just know how many men it is. Yeah. Um, if you've got a spy, this can fill out with additional detail of what the actual troops might be. And here it gives you a little general idea of who's more likely to win. As you can see, oh, there you go. Very Blue and nice. red bar indicates nice. balance of power. <laughs> so that, the help is help. yet again helping. <laughs> so there we go. So this is um, auto complete. This one here. Um, this is actually uh, 3D battle. Uh, this one here is runaway. Um, and if we do that, we've got to do it in the Monty Python runaway, runaway, style, runaway yeah. style. Runaway, yeah. <laughs> um, I think let's get in with a 3D battle in there. Show you how this all works and a uh, couple of new features yeah. for the Rome, I think. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, this is the the sort of second part of the game, which you know comes into its own really nicely, where you can command your armies in the field and actually you know, this is a fine make good, day to join make good our of, of one day in a battle. But it is a better and, day to live, change, so that we can tell our grandchildren of, of our bravery. Yeah. So here we go. We've got all the, uh, all the units and the battering ram. So let's start. The Await my orders. So uh, a few things. Um, first one is the uh, the zoom levels are sort of much increased over the original, so you can zoom out a lot further than before. And we also added in um, yeah. tilt. That's very good. Which um, the original didn't we didn't have in. So adding in tilt just makes such a difference of being able to set the. You you want everybody plays with a slightly different need. Or what angle you want, and also sometimes depends on the map or depends on um, how you're playing it at different times. So being able to just tweak it to what you want um, is super handy. Um, I love how much more you can zoom in as well. Like you can get very, very good detail on the uh, on on the battles that are like unfolding in front of you. Yeah. So I mean, there you go. I mean, that's uh, these really cool dudes here. Rotate around. So. Um, enough uh, playing around, I think. Let's, uh, let's put some people into some groups. So, um, Waterbag! Slingers! Ooh! Oh, I didn't oh. mean to show that off straight away. Don't wanna. So, we got three different units Hashtag here. spoilers. Yeah, so put those into group one. Um, and actually, we'll um, put those four guys up into one group, and then we decide where we're going to put them. So we'll put those guys here. Um, so then we can 
But now, as you can see, we have range markers. So, um, the original Rome, modern games, they all have range markers and it's no big deal. But uh, we've added range markers into uh, Rome Total War. So, this is super handy when you're setting up um, your sort of your troops because what you probably want to do is you want to make sure that your um, any troops who can fire bows and arrows or your onagers and things like that you want to make sure that they're within range of being able to hit the enemy um, but not too close so with the range markers it's quite easy for you to make sure that you've got good coverage of patterns and you can also make sure that your own troops aren't in the uh, danger zone of being hit by your own troops. Yeah. So for example, in this case, um, if these guys start firing the enemy are coming, then um, a couple of my units over about here, they, they potentially could get nailed by these guys. So yeah. you've got to think about these things. So this just makes it a little bit easier. It's what the newer games does and uh, it's, it's quite... It's a very nice addition. It makes, it really gives, that, gives a new feel to the, to the classic strategy. Yeah, so, and then let's just... Uh, Third group. Slingers. Actually, let's just um, let's back group because we these guys are just a battering ram. So let's start the battle. And the feeble enemy have more men. Ha! These are more heads for our warriors to collect in triumph. Get them to knock on the door. They can knock on the door and see if anyone's in. So we can also have a quick look at the. Uh, the overall map here, we can see that basically all their units are uh, hiding by the door, and then a few of them are stabbed in the middle of the uh, middle of town in the square there. But also, what you can do is let's say just deselect our uh, general and just select these three units. And just our warriors have reached the enemy gate with the ram. The so what you do is you just hold down two fingers on the screen till a purple glow appears under your fingers, and then let go and. There you go, done now, form into formation. So it's very simple, it's hold your fingers down till you see the glow, drag and then let go and it'll go into that formation. Very nice. And you can see the little triangles popping up. Um, so, and then selecting different um, groups. I can select any of the specific units in here by just tapping deselect and reselect all, but I can also just tap on one of the units. Or if I want to select the entire thing, you just tap on the, the number at the bottom underneath and it will select all of them or deselect all of them, depending on how you want them. Nice. Right. Hey, Your we're in. Okay. The the is open. Right. Let so, men kill all enough the messing the boots. Inside. It's time to, uh, time to start causing, causing havoc. Total mayhem. Right, so as you can see here, it's Rooney. and Rooney. Um, these first guys are probably going to get a little bit of a uh, beating. get a bit of a beating. But basically, what you need to do is we'll um, they're the sacrificial lambs, but everybody else is going to uh, pile on in behind. I mean, it's not a bad um, defense they've got there because they basically got a choke point. Yeah. Um, but in we just need to push far enough back that we can keep on pushing them back. And then that way, we can slowly get more and more troops coming in because all of our cavalry is stuck out there. So it's, uh, yeah. When it comes to sieges, I'll our warriors have taken the, the walls. The now the streets will run. Like the wall or at, at, the, uh, at the, the gates have just been breached. It makes so much of a difference when you're defending. Like you can have a very small amount of troops succeed against a much larger army if you have if you're able to block those kind of uh, en those entrance points. Yes, Right, so um, yeah, well. Right, so I think basically the, this is going to be an absolute whooping now. We're in, they're on the run. We've just got to go and take over the, uh, the town hall area. So let's um, select one of these guys. And, uh, actually. So these are some ranged units, so if I go and get my ranged units to go here, we should be able to get them within range of the enemy, but also, I don't think they have any range right now. No, 
just war bands. Just war bands. So in theory, we should be able to uh, get our guards to uh, rain arrow gas down. choke point there, everybody getting through, trying to get past all the dead bodies. Hmm. That's one advantage of using more than one battering ram. When you can, when you, in these kinds of settlements, the smaller ones, you, uh, you, you can use more than one battering Units. ram, so you can take out sections of the wall as well. So if you're attacking, it's definitely a good idea to have more than one entry point, because um, obviously as you saw with the defenders, they were just able to stop you at kind of one place. Um, although it didn't do them much good because we massively outnumbered them, but if, depending on the factions you choose, especially if it's one of the uh, the Greek ones, yeah, um, where they have the phalanx uh, units, like yeah, they are warlord absolutely flees from our like warriors. devastating. Attack um, and drive them back in the same way. Attacking them head on is just just not a good idea, um, especially if you're using like sort of weaker light infantry units. Um, tactics right now, we're kind of overrunning them, as you can see in the top right hand corner, uh, top left hand corner. You can see that we're. Um, very much. It's, it's, there you go. It's victim, victory is almost a certainty. Uh, and yeah, if nothing's going on every once in a while, it reminds you about your battery. Yeah. I mean, you never want to be reminded about your battery, but. That's true. But. Until you run out of battery. <laughs> until you run out of battery, and then, and then you kind of wish you had. Yes. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think we find when you're playing a game like this engrossing, you can easily burn through like an hour yeah. without realizing. So yeah. just having the uh, being able to quickly check your battery and quickly remind you your battery is um, yeah, really I, useful. I'm, I'm I'm very guilty of like the late game um, stages where I will spend maybe an hour per turn, like just my, just micromanaging the all of the things that I can, like yeah. just, them just getting everything just them right, just the way I like it, and, just, and then to, and then ending turn and then repeating it. So it might or, uh, or or if you end up. Um, playing a turn where you have to fight multiple battles in that turn, it's always a really good idea to, to know what how much battery life you've got. If you know that's gonna come up then you know you know whether you need to you know get yourself charged. So clear victory. Where's the info? And we're done. So one little thing which um, we didn't need to do on that battle is half speed. Mm. So half speed was added into the later Rome uh, later games post Rome from I think medieval two onwards but it was added back into uh, Rome. So again, when you've got a really tricky Our battle, you conquest. usually want to uh, sometimes slow things down without pausing them. Yeah. So that that can get really, Just really so you handy. you can see what's happening and see where in the game things are moving towards. And it's, yeah, I, I, like having a slow motion button does make a big difference when you're, especially when if there's a lot going on on the map and you need to just see what's happening at the without because if you pause it sometimes it doesn't give you enough information to see where troops are going yeah if you can slow it down just enough and that gives you a really good idea on what you need to do all right so what do you want to do i know that you're a fan of just exterminating pretty everything. much yeah i mean i mean to me exterminating the population just guarantees a lot of a lot of wins um early on um depending on the depending on the uh, the settlements you go for um this type of settlement this close to um like, the, like there's part of the, the sort of barbarian yeah. ones, you could get away with occupying, um, actually, and, and we could be quite generous in that. I think that um, let's try occupy because we probably want to be recruit some uh, recruit some troops. Yeah, um, especially the lower population, um, like the smaller settlements. If you exterminate them, or if you ex or if you keep exterminating a, a very large settlement, um, effectively they run out of population, so that actually you kind of lose out in a way because yeah. you've killed off all the potential troops that you could recruit um, or need to uh, retrain using with the surplus per population. Um, so it's definitely a good idea to um, to be generous where you can. <laughs> so this is another little cool thing popping up just over Sam's head about here is um, the auto merge button. So what this merge button does nice. is uh, with Rome you could Select one of these unit cards, and you can you can you could drag them about and merge units that way. But if you hold your finger down on here, you have auto merge. So what this does is it, it does a merge, 
but it does a smart merge. So you will notice that some of your uh, units will build up experience and become more experienced. And that means sort of they are more likely to, um, less likely to sort of run away during battles, more likely to win. There's loads of little buffs you can get. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you can get buffs for um, their armor and their, diff and, and their weapons and things like that. So what it does is it will merge all of your units, but I think you, you played Total War. Yeah, no, so yeah, so yeah. you end up merging like uh, you've got three or four battle hardened units that have lost lots of troops and then you've got three or four brand new units and when you merge them all together you end up sort of lowering the overall yeah, you, standard. You kind of get an average of what, what you're yeah. looking for, yeah. So what this button actually does is it basically goes through all of the, every single member of every single unit, like so there's, there's uh, 120 of the one I've got selected right now, every single unit, um, actual person inside that unit has got their own um, skill ratings oh, right, inside okay, the game. Yeah, yeah. So, what, so what we do is we actually merge them but we take we, we we sort all of the the actual individual units by their skill levels first, then do the merge. So when you hit the merge button, you'll end up with one one of the units will be all of your crack troops get put in there, and then that way, if you're using the auto merge button, you can if you have let's say ten really great trained troops and with sort of half half size and then you've got a couple of brand new ones if you were manually doing it sometimes you'd have to make sure that you balanced everything out hitting this button you'll end up with one unit which is like the best of the best of the best and then it'll slowly go down oh, that's brilliant and yeah. it is just so good because what you normally want is you want one or two units with like which you know are devastatingly good and you use those guys either as your reserve guys or maybe um, your first attack to just punch a hole through you want to have all the best guys in one place. Yeah, no, that's really so handy. So yeah. this auto merge thing, you hit the button, boom, there we go. We've just kind of remerged everything. Um, you noticed all the numbers changed, but it's basically uh, merged them, sort of the smart way. Yeah, I should yeah. say. Yeah, no, that's really good. That's a really handy, especially like that will pay off later on when you again, it will, you know, pays off massively in the late game where you have kind of a a big mix of different skilled troops especially if you've been losing battles and winning battles yeah. and you've, you've kind of got all these different mixes um, of, of skills in, in your army and if you've had one big battle where you've lost a lot of troops and you need to try and merge and make, make the best unit that's actually a really good idea um, to do that rather than General. Uh, just straight up retraining them and, and losing, losing those really skilled guys in that yeah in exactly that it's, yeah. Uh, so it, it's really really handy and again it's just a little thing which we've added into the, the mobile version um, it's, it's quite a cool little little extra um, one other thing I thought I'd show is we've got um, two you have two units uh, two generals next to each other or general and governor basically any of your family members next to each other you'll notice you get this extra little button here um, which allows you to move retinues between your uh, different family members so if we have a look here we actually notice that um, family member on this side here got quite different skill set um, to uh, family member here so he, he's quite a good general this guy is a pretty useless general so druid plus one morale for all troops plus one command when attacking uh, let's put that with uh, this guy over here and now Lord if we general. go into here and uh, bring up their info we can see that he's got it yeah we can see that we've got the additional and you can actually see here when I was talking earlier in the uh, earlier on about sort of orange being both good and bad um, this guy loves bloodshed so it's plus one command but minus one morale for all troops on the battlefield which is really handy he's now got a druid on yeah. there to give him a plus one back up again yeah and, well plus two because he's also got the armor up. yeah so, so that's a really that's a really nice feature that just means that you can get your generals in and if there's a if there's a uh, particular general that you don't like um, you can give him all of the bad traits and if there's one that you do like you can give him all the good traits and then you can you can play favorites yeah quite exactly I, I, yeah. I have to admit what I tend to do is I go and grab the guy I don't like and then collect all of the bad traits that you just don't want anyone to have I give him like a couple of peasants and then send him off into an unwinnable battle against 50,000 people and <laughs> he dries, dies a hero's death and we get rid of all of the drunken hangers on yeah. and all of the other uh, 
sort of uh, uh, ones here. So one thing I've just brought up here is a list. Um, so all of those traits and everything. This is a nice little total totalizer, so you can see what your uh, what your traits add, what your retinues buffing, and what your totals are. So as you can see. Um, the really cool thing about this is if we go back to over here, you've got command management and influence. As you can see, none of those key commands have actually been improved by these um, extra retinue items because they're actually they're sort of secret hidden buffs. Yeah. So if you actually go to the information page here, it actually gives you all of these and um, totals all of these up. So you can see that your troop morale is minus one because he's bloodthirsty and enjoys seeing his subordinates yeah. die. But you've got plus two due to your retinue. So overall, you're plus one. So you're basically, although this guy's got a negative trait, and you can't get rid of traits. Traits are there forever. Retinues um, are things you can trade. Yes. So by using a retinue, we've actually got rid of one of his negative things. Um, so overall, he's even better than he was before. Um, so that's another thing you can do, is just you can try and work around some of the negative traits by using um, retinues to kind of cover them up. Because often you can get some somebody who's a really great general, but might have a couple of things which are just terrible. But yeah. if you use your retinues, you can work around them. So um, again, it's small little thing, but being able to easily trade um, that that feature, for example, did exist inside Rome, but you had to drag the cards on top of each other was the only way to do it. Yeah. So we've again just put a little button and make it quick and easy to use, um, and it's a, a really cool kind of thing. I use it loads when, especially in end game scenarios. Yeah, well, there's, especially when it's, uh, you know, uh, I, I often found that, like, uh, my faction leader would often deteriorate over time. Like, as, yeah. as they as they kind of, um, as they sort of, the faction leader gets passed down to the faction heir and it goes on and on. You know, I always found that, like, the faction heirs, because your empire was so big, you couldn't always give your generals the experience they needed. So you always found that they couldn't share the, the kind of really useful traits with each other until and, and, until figuring that out. Um, whereas at least now it's much easier to do that, and you get a much you get bigger reward as a result. Yeah. So I, I think one of the um, one of the things which you can also do is when your faction leader is getting quite old, when a faction uh, when one of your generals dies, all of their retinue disbands. Mm -hmm. So when your faction leader is getting to the end of his life, should we say, the best thing to do is go and find um, his heir, get them to meet up somewhere, and then take all of their really awesome retinue which they build up over you know many many years yeah. which have got loads of great buffs and then trade them to your faction heir and then when your faction leader dies um, no biggie because about half of his really good buffs will have been through the passed retinue. over there yeah passed yeah. over so what you do is you normally have your faction leader um, leading the charge sort of as one of your best generals is the way I normally play but yeah. one thing you tend I tend to do is as soon as he's getting on a bit you remove all of the uh, all of the really good um, sort of general fighting side ones. Mm -hmm. Give them to your next in line in the faction air, and then go and take your faction leader, and then go and instill them as a governor somewhere. Um, by that point, when they're getting quite old, they normally have enough um, standard buffs to be a really good governor. It just yeah. tends to come with age. You tend to get more and more of those things, so you can get them to run somewhere, try and stop um, rioting, especially when you get further away from your. Uh, capital yeah, city yeah. Um, and then move on that way so again that's like a really good I think hint especially when you're playing on some of the harder factions like um, like Macedon's a bit trickier that's one of the new factions we've added in um, trying to think uh, playing as Spain that's yeah, quite a tricky yeah. one so using these little tricks like that um, Britannia and Spain because they're on one side of the map when you get to the other side of the map the further away from your capital city the more likely you are to have riots yeah so actually, that brings bring me on to one another thing. Um, let's just auto complete this battle. Ooh, bad choice. Lost that town. We yeah. paid good money for that. Yeah, we did. <laughs> um, well, at least we didn't buy any. Well, we did pay for the troops because we got the troops when yeah, we yeah. spent a lot of money on them. But um, so. Oh, here we go. This. Uh... So what were we wanting to demo before we? I'm just faction capital. Yeah, I was going to change my faction capital to there, but we can change it to uh, here instead. So, yeah. so currently our faction capital is Londinium, as you can see on the world map. 
it's quite a ways up here. So once you start capturing areas down here, you can get quite a lot of rioting, especially in Egypt. So what you want to do is you can actually move your faction capital. So we'll show you how to do that. Actually, let's move it to here. Um, so um, if you notice, there you go. Set this settlement to be your faction capital. You can tap on it and there you go. It's the capital. It. Done. Done. So that will reset um, your influence is coming out from your capital. So what, what you can do is keep on moving your capital sort of closer to the middle of the map as you go, which is actually why playing as like the Julii or one of the sort of the default factions is actually easier. Yeah, yeah. Because you're kind of in the middle of the map. So just bear that in mind. It yeah. doesn't really matter where you go from there because you're always going out in, in the opposite direction. So you're in the best, the capital's already in the best place to start with. So factionaires. Yeah, so how do you set a factionaire? So we go in to uh, your factions, and here this is information about other factions, your faction, and as you can see here, inventory of different military stuff. So let's go into factions, and then what we need to do is have a look at your family tree. Yeah. So um, you can see here who is your faction leader. He's got a little uh, little icon on him, and that's where he is on the map. Let's quickly go back in actually. And Instead of looking at him, let's go and set a factionaire. So if we go and see this guy here, and go hold it down. So if we click on here, here you go, make this guy your factionaire. Yeah. So all I have to do is select this guy, hold down my finger here, bring up the button, and boom. And now if you notice the little icons changed. Yeah. So um, that's actually a really good point because um, your faction leader has loads of additional buffs by being the faction leader so the best thing to do is actually look through all of these guys and work out um, okay he's useless he's influential but useless in a battle he's yeah, not too bad and he's Yeah, not too bad either. I don't know out of those two. I tend to stick in preference. I tend to stick with um, with the younger ones in age because I find that that gives them more time in order to uh, build up better traits and uh, and skills. Yep. Um, but it's, it's important to note that you can't change the faction leader. So it's very important that you spend time and energy working on your faction heirs because they are the ones that are going to be you know, the default yep. leaders when the time comes. So it's very important to make sure that your faction heir is a good general already and he's already getting, you know, and you're gonna yeah, make yeah. him better and better so that totally. actually when it comes time to, uh, you know, when it comes time for him to take the leadership role, um, you, you have to make sure that he's, he's, in a good, he's in a good position to do that. Otherwise you'll find that there'll be just, there'll be, you won't use him and other generals will, um, you know, cause as a faction leader, he comes with some traits as well that are actually quite good buffs. Um, so if he's not using them, then you know they're, they're, they're just wasted traits that uh, you know you, you really want to be giving um, to, to other generals. Yeah. So if I go here actually, and we have a look at this is our faction leader. Um, we have a look. You get your faction leader buff is plus two influence, plus one command, plus three for personal security. So uh, that adds quite a lot. And you'll also find actually over time, your uh, faction leader will just gain traits mm. so um, well actually all of your units will gain traits over time as they become more skilled and if you put them through lots of battles you're slightly more likely to pick up traits yeah um, another thing which you might want to do while playing um, is if you don't think you've got enough family members and you're trying to get some new generals really quickly go and send some troops into battle without a general and then you you don't have a huge chance, but you have a sort of higher than average chance if you win a stunning victory afterwards to say um, one of the troops or one of the captains stood out and would you like to adopt him into your family? Mm. Um, so that is a great way of just picking up some extra is, generals quickly. That can be quite handy, yeah, especially if you're yeah, especially if you're having trouble with your family tree and that's a lot of them are being sort of killed off or uh, or sort of uh, are dying or, or not particularly good. If you get that opportunity, they, they often tend to those ones that get promoted from the ranks tend to start off pretty well. Like they have yeah. some basic traits, but they're always quite good traits as well. So they, they tend to be quite useful um, to have 
if you ever get if you get the chance to uh, order them. Yes, yeah, so that's um, ooh, how many of these guys should we? Uh, Chief. So um, actually, I forgot. I haven't explained. It's another little quick quick selection guy trick. If you uh, double tap on a unit and then slide with your Orders. finger, ooh, you can select multiple units at once. So that just makes it a little bit quicker if you want to select. I mean, selecting them all, you can use the select all button, but if you want to select uh, just a, a few of them at once. So nice. If you just want to select these four, like just like that, and that's just a quicker way. You can tap on them individually, but again, what we've tried to do is, is, is a simple, basic way when you're learning to play, but once you, let's say, this kind of game, you could be 100, 200 hours deep yeah. into the game. I think I'm probably sort of, uh, I'm thousands of hours into the game yeah, at this point. Yeah. So you have, you want these extra little shortcuts to be able to do things um, a little bit easier. So let's, let's um, actually, oh no, I don't want to do that. Let's go and set, take them all. Um, let's select everybody. Now this is a distinctly risky maneuver um, because taking all of your Attack! units out of a city um, is always asking yes. for trouble. General, general, because um, they could rebel, especially when you've just taken it over. Yes, but um, you know, hence why I often move out, exterminate. No the more operation. moves. Yes. <laughs> the other thing you can do is, as well as uh, um, enslave the population, um, that can be quite a good thing to do, but it requires sort of make sort of a, a keeping an eye on the settlements um, like all of your settlements because if you just keep enslaving the population what you may find after a while is that certain cities start to lose um, their public order because of like massive population growth um, so it's it's something to keep an eye on um, definitely if you're if you're choosing to enslave but you do get good economic buffs from it yeah so. and the other really uh, useful thing you can do is if you've got lots of um, cities that you have really low population you can't recruit units if you enslave the populace all of your all of your settlements will get a few extra people yeah and that actually helps to you to recruit units so if you're in basically a, a position where you just don't have enough people where you want to recruit then you should start enslaving populaces of places as you go along and then all of it basically just increases the yeah, amount of people yeah. you can save. So it, can be, it can be very valuable. It's a really nice and quick way of doing it. Okay, I think this one I'm probably going to lose. Fall back. Uh, but what I thought we could do right now is uh, maybe quickly show off um, all of the different historical battles. Yeah. So this was the campaign mode. Um, before we leave, there's a uh, inside here. There's options. So we have actually added in a bunch of really quite useful options. If you if you start playing and you want to be able to play in slightly different style, or you're finding it too hard or too easy, you can reset stuff. So you can turn your advice level up and down. Currently we're on low, but you can turn it on high, and your advisor will pop up with more help. Um, also, all of those touch and hold down help. Um, things we've been showing yeah. by default the first time you play the first time you go into any new screen it'll pop up and explain everything for you um, and then disappear and then from then on you have to hold your finger down but you can turn that back on back off by just uh, clicking on here so first time help is what it's default on the first time you play and then it drops down um, for this stream we've all been playing quite a lot so yeah. we set it to low um, so battle difficulty again you can decide how hard you want it to be um, and then also we've got a few things here with like um, arcade battles so arcade battles means that it removes some of the um, realism buffs of units getting tired um, morale so they run away it turns all of those things off so it's a bit more like an arcade unit that if that unit has got an attack of level four they've always got an attack level four they don't get scared things like that yeah, yeah. Um, some people think it's a little bit simpler um, and prefer it 
but I think in general sort of having the full experience of being able to actually uh, have troops run away when they get scared and they get tired if you tell them to run around too much so you've got to let them get their breath back it's yeah. kind of a cool part of the actual yeah, battle. Yeah, it, it definitely it definitely helps to um to to make things more interesting because if you situate your army as far away um, from the enemy as possible and force them to charge towards you, and if, especially if you're on a hill and things like that, there's a lot of there's a lot of extra levels of, of um, tactical play that yeah. you can you can have to it where you you know if you're forcing them to come up hill towards you, you have a bigger advantage because they'll tire out quicker, and the fact that you're fighting on a hill will give you a chance to uh, push down on them. And, instead yeah exactly um, using sort of hype to your advantage um, a couple of other ones manage your settlements if you noticed I turned AI control of my settlements off when I was trying to do things you can actually just check that and then all manual control is off and you can just you're controlling everything yeah um, that will be better better than having the AI controlled stuff but it is also, especially near the end of the end game, more time consuming. Yeah. So as, um, as I was saying, when I'd spend an hour doing <laughs> micromanaging, that's a personal preference. So it's not something I would, you know, yeah. if you like doing that, then that's definitely the way to do it. But if you like, like, but obviously, if you want to try and get through those end game turns a lot quicker, having the auto manage can be quite yeah. a time saver yeah. um, when you're playing turns in general. Exactly. Or you can do kind of what I was doing, which is turning it on and off. So if you're focused on that area of the map, you turn it off, you manually stack all of the buildings you want to do, and then you throw it back to AI control afterwards. Yeah. A um, few other things, we've got a, uh, we can do things like inverting the camera tilt. Um, we allow um, different versions of the manual, camera zooms, um, the expanding card bar I showed where you flick it up and flick it down with your finger. You can make that automatically pop up every time you select a unit. So. If you if you haven't got the largest uh, size screen on your Android device and you're finding it tricky to select units, or you just like looking at them in that really big yeah. kind of cool artwork style, you can just change this um, to automatic, and it'll automatically pop up instead. Um, we've also got um, things like sticky status info. So one thing um, which I can actually show you in a second is um, the campaign map has loads of different types of status information which were, was on the desktop but you, you don't see them all on Android straight away because it would make it really cluttered um, but you can hold your finger on the map icon in the top right and they'll all pop up what sticky status info does is it turns that into a toggle so if you hold your finger on the map icon and they pop up and you let go they'll stay there forever till you turn it back off so some people prefer all the information on the screen at once yeah don't care if it's messy Turn that on, you can do it. So again, it, this is all stuff for play styles. Um, battery saver mode is one. What it does is it just turns down a few settings, um, comes up with a couple of clever ways of vary, varying the frame rate while you're playing. So if you're on a screen like this, which doesn't have a lot of movement, it'll turn down the frame rate as you're playing to make it uh, sort of, you don't you won't notice, but it's actually saving you a bit of battery time. Oh, that's quite handy. So. If you're on a commute and you get on the train and you go, I've only got 35% battery left, fire up the old battery saver and you'll get to the end of your train yeah. journey and you'll still have a, enough percent to send someone a text to say that um, the train's inevitably delayed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we just Because you were playing Rome Total War. <laughs> yeah, and you missed your stop. Yeah. So um, there we go, those are all the, the, uh, the different um, really cool kind of settings. We also have a manual. So what we actually did is, this manual is more um, tips and tricks. It's a little bit like um, the advice we've been giving you here while we've been playing along, is just sort of what, you know, things to think about, what to do, as well as what they actually are. So if you select armies, it gives you information, but it also tells you if you choose to another, another faction, what things you should do, a few things to keep in mind. So it's both explaining what the buttons in the game actually does, but it's a little bit more um, also giving you a good idea of how not to sort of just die straight away. Yeah. Um, this game is a, is a fully featured desktop game in terms of the, the depth and the complexity of it. Um, so it's a lot, lot more uh, sort of, there's a lot more thought behind it than let's say one of those quick fire and, fire and forget more yeah, basic games. Yeah. So what this does is give you a few tips. So if you find yourself a little bit overwhelmed, go in here and it'll give you a few ideas of, for example, how to run your settlements and things to do with all the different governor's palaces, what to do, um, how to upgrade, things like that. So I would say if you feel like you're sort of getting a little bit lost, have a look in here. 
We also have this little button here which actually will load up and explain all of the different possible gestures in the game. So how to draw a path, how to select units. So you probably saw me doing a whole bunch of different gestures. Um, most of them work just like um, you know Google Maps will work on your Android phone. Yeah. It's pinch and zoom, dragging things around. But if you ever want to know sort of how any specific thing would work, you can just flick through all of these and there's explanations of how you merge units, put units into fleets, and take them off, take them off a fleet, how a fleet attacks another fleet. All of these different things are all here with the different um, images and explanations. So it's well worth having a poke around if you uh, if you yeah. just have a, th a thought or a wonder about something. Should we try a historical battle? Okay, let's. let's uh, I, th I think that let's just start off at the beginning, the uh, animal. So um, here we go. Basically, well, I don't know. here we go. Battle difficulty easy. Um, let's see what side he's got. Okay. Right. He's got some. But he doesn't have elephants with him this time. Although Hannibal did yeah. did have elephants. Um, and with the Rome shell, you can use olifants as well, which is a uh, I know something <laughs> a lot Rome of people like. Not the only size. power rising you along like the shores of the Mediterranean. The olifant, the olifant cheat is the is the cheat for you. So the really cool thing about the historical battles is you get like a really big intro. Another um, people, the Carthaginians, on, have imperial speak. ambitions. Um, Their empire is growing in Spain, go, even as the Romans secure the Italian through, peninsula. You can see, um, with the unit sizes on the uh, on the Android phones, you can get really For big Rome, unit sizes. Caius yeah, Flaminius has sizes been sent are, north to deal um, with the Carthaginian the same problem. Same size as the maximum setting the PC could support. So um, you can't get more. And it is um, a problem. Is basically the Hannibal Barca, the greatest Carthaginian the general game, ever, is, is on the march. Really quite awesome, especially for big battles Units, like this. Um, it's really cool. He it's swore an oath to his dying Units father that he would never give the Romans a moment's peace. Right, I think we're probably... Hannibal has already this kept his oath at Trebia. After that victory, yes. he forced the Romans back yes. onto the defensive. Yeah. It's one, of the, it's one of the few things I say is definitely the most valuable. Is, is now, with his ambushes. army at Lake Trasimene, if you're, if Hannibal you're plans to lure ambush, another Roman army uh, into a brutal ambush. Vital. He <laughs> has every reason to hope the, the Romans the will cooperate in their own deaths. Yeah. Right. The Romans quickly moved to meet the obvious threat from Hannibal's men. The legionaries must turn and face the oncoming Carthaginians and... Okay, do here we go. The battle has started. And we're kind of having our... Uh, things ain't going well. That's the best way of putting it, I don't think. Right. So... But these guys here are... Uh, already in routing. Already running away. All right, let's keep themselves speed, from being we? surrounded. And yeah, these guys smash them. So one thing which happens is, um, although some of our units are currently uh, sort of running away, disbanding, um, they can, when they see the other troops, kind of get their morale back yeah. and then come back into the battle. But they'll be pretty shaken, so you don't want to throw them straight back into the. Um, straight back into the fray. You know, you yeah. want to sort of um, maybe hold let, them for a bit. yeah, hold them off for a bit, or maybe have them, you know, have some easy pickings of some units that uh, they'll definitely win to get their morale back up. Um, the worst thing possible you can do is turn them around and send them right back into where they were being mullered, because like they'll run away again, and the more times they run away, like the less likely they are to come back. Yeah. So as you can see, fighting a phalanx unit head on um, is just an absolute devastating uh, result for your, for your forces as the, the phalanx guys are really good at holding um, enemy units in at the front um, as well as you know, allowing like buying time for other units like cavalry um, to move in around the sides and the, and the flanks um, so it's always a case of you know if you can if you can avoid taking on a, 
a phalanx unit head on, then you should definitely try. Attack! Let's, let's see if we can get around and start getting inside. Triaria! Just when we were, just when we were winning. A defeat. And so I think, yeah, that's it. So we're no um, purpose. but from this victory we're all will spring away. afresh. So in typical Rome style. Ah, oh. there we go. Um, well, you see, if you have a look, uh, casualties inflicted. We weren't too too far behind. I think good. The, the, good. the really tricky thing is is just how many units you have routing. Yeah, yeah. And and also, also from a from a taking on a, like a, a normal, say if you were defending in an ambush in a campaign, you would still have all of your units to start with, so you wouldn't necessarily have that problem. Um, but which is why the historical battles are really good in some ways, because they challenge you. Um, yeah, they throw you in sort of halfway yeah. through where half your units are routing, they're in the worst position possible and You've just got to get on with it. Yeah. And that, that especially once you've been playing for a while, is really cool because it's like, I'm going to go and challenge myself. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely uh, worth doing. Um, I do know that it, it, if you're not talking, um, I found that battle so much easier yeah. when I'm not actually <laughs> trying to demo things. Because you just totally forget about a unit. Oh, don't, the, the unit over there, he's off going doing things. Um, so, um, there we go. That is, that is it. Right. Rome for Android. Right, so that's it from us. Um, so when uh, Rome Android comes out, you can see if you did uh, did better than uh, Edwin here. Um, so thank you very much for uh, watching. Uh, follow our Facebook and Twitter feeds and our website for more news on Rome Android as it comes out. And we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>